Welcome, my friends, to the next episode of Hollow Knight. Last time out, we managed to beat Pure Vessel twice. The time before, we beat Pure Vessel once. If that trend continues, we'll beat Pure Vessel three times this episode? Four times? The twist this time is every time we lose to Pure Vessel, I'm going to read you a quotation from Sun Tzu's The Art of War. Maybe some ancient wisdom will give us some insight into what we could be doing differently here. This is of course the warm-up fight. Ah, no, got hit by his hitbox. Well, obviously, because that's realistically the only part that ever hits you. Unfortunate that. Should have gone through him. Okay, we got to orbs. Ah, I tell you what though, my my thumb is already hurting after the first one. <laughs> Maybe I didn't give enough of a break since the previous episode. This is uh, from chapter six, weaknesses and strengths. Now, here's my advice to you: if you are going to try and read the art of war, do not read it in order. The intention of this work is that it's more a textbook rather than a novel. Okay. And the first chapter is literally all about, like, estimates and how you estimate how many cavalry you're going to need for certain terrains and things like that. The first chapter is very dry, and I am certain a lot of people who started reading this book fell down at the first chapter. So, chapter six. I think chapter six is a good place to start. It's called Weaknesses and Strengths. Sun Tzu said... Generally, he who occupies the field of battle first and awaits his enemy is at ease. He who comes later to the scene and rushes into the fight is weary. Very wise, very wise. In this case, how would I apply this to this situation? Well, indeed, the pure vessel, we are on the pure vessel's home turf, right? He is awaiting us and he is the one that's at ease. So we must be mindful of this as we fight him. Oh, yep. Oh, yep. Okay, good start. Oh. Huh. Oh. Ah. We got done by that bloody thing twice. Do you know what? Quick slash though when those orbs come up. That's like the one, isn't it? Hey, 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 there we go. Beat him second time. I said we need to be able to beat him 20% of the time. Quick slash, when those orbs come up, do not worry about quick focus, right? When those orbs come up, what you need to be worrying about is you need to be worrying about quick slashing him as many times as you can. That is going to end the fight fast. All right. Well, no quote this time, because we beat him. <laughs> we want to get to the point where we're beating him about 20% of the time, is what I said. Then we can work on the Pantheon.
Ah, yeah, okay, you got us good there. Whoop! Okay, one heal. No. Okay, one heal. We've got time. Oh, just about. Just about. Oh. Oh no, abort. I tell you what though, that was close. That was close. Hmm. And therefore, those skilled in war bring the enemy to the field of battle and are not brought there by him. Most wise. Oh. Oh no. Oh no. Yeah, okay, we're all sort we're all out of shape now. Okay, one healy there. Yeah, you do not want to be jumping up when it's doing... Ooh, oh, no! <laughs> yeah, we got all, all out of sorts on that one. Mm. One able to make the enemy come of his own accord does so by offering him some advantage, and one able to prevent him from coming does so by hurting him. To you, says of this verse... If you are able to hold critical points on his strategic roads, the enemy cannot come. Therefore, Master Wang said, when a cat is at the rat hole, 10,000 rats dare not come out. When a tiger guards the ford, 10,000 deer cannot cross. Uh, incidentally, the version I have uh, also includes a lot of... Um, uh, a lot of... Analysis, analysis of the passages themselves, which is really great actually. Rather than the analysis all being footnotes, the analysis is sort of directly in line with the verses, which is a, a really great way of consuming it. Yep. Yeah. By the point you see it's the pinwheel attack, it's it's too late, right? Okay, good start. Ah, it got us, got us good. Yeah, probably shouldn't have even. Oh, ho, ho. Oh, no, abort! <laughs> Got me good there. When the enemy is at ease, be able to wary him, 
when well fed to starve him, when at rest to make him move. Hmm. So we need to get the pure vessel off kilter. We need to get him off balance. Or rather, we consider the inverse, right? What is he doing that makes us off balance? Well, he's hitting us really hard in the face. And that'll certainly do it, you know? Okay. Oh, we, we snuck in a second heal there. Oh! Wow, we didn't even get to orbs that time. That's got to be worth uh, two quotes. Appear at places to which he must hasten. Move swiftly where he does not expect you. That you may march a thousand li without wearying yourself is because you travel where there is no enemy. Li is a measurement of distance. Uh, Cao, Cao said, Go into emptiness, strike voids, bypass what he defends, hit him where he does not expect you. Okay. Where does he not expect to be hit? Probably in the back. Right, here we go. Oh no, he parried me! Okay, one heal. Ah. Okay, one. Oh, no. F. To be certain to take what you attack is to attack a place the enemy does not protect. To be certain to hold what you defend is to defend a place the enemy does not attack. That, that's a deep one, that is. I like that one. Chapter 6 is definitely the chapter to start on. It's, it's got some really profound stuff in there. No! Ah! <laughs> okay. Poof. He's too quick! He's too quick! Oh. So you can you can just about fit a double in still. No. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, that was kind of on me because I literally didn't see that he was deflect, that he was parrying. Oh no! 
Hmm. Therefore, against those skilled in attack, an enemy does not know where to defend. Against the experts in defense, the enemy does not know where to attack. This is also a very subtle way that I can actually just count our attempts as well, which is kind of weirdly handy. Ah! Oh no, I went the wrong way! No! Unhappy with that one. We we did badly that time. Subtle and insubstantial, the expert leaves no trace. Divinely mysterious, he is inaudible. Thus, he is master of his enemy's fate. Ho Yen Hsi said, I make the enemy see my strengths as weaknesses, and my weaknesses as strengths, while I cause his strengths to become weaknesses, and discover where he is not strong. I conceal my tracks so that none can discern them. I keep silence so that none can hear me. Okay. Oh no! Oh! Okay, can we get one heal in there? Oh. oh, I got me on the back swing. I thought we were going to be alright range-wise there. Can I get two? Yes, can get two. Oh no! That was really close. That was really close. He whose advance is irresistible plunges into his enemy's weak positions. He who in withdrawal cannot be pursued moves so swiftly he cannot be overtaken. Chang Yu says, Come like the wind, go like the lightning. I have to think about that one a bit more. He whose advance is irresistible plunges into his enemy's weak positions. He who in withdrawal cannot be pursued moves so swiftly he cannot be overtaken. I don't really understand that one. That basically seems to say be fast in both attack and retreat. I'm not sure what the relevance of come like the wind, withdraw like lightning means though. Like, are those sort of different to each other? I don't know.
Okay. Good. One down. Ah. Unlucky we got there. Okay, good, right, take one. Ah, no. Ooh. Fine. Okay, take one here. No! Got him. <sighs> Got him. Okay. This is good. This is great progress. Are we going again? Yes, we're going again. Yes, we're going again. That's two wins out of 11 attempts, which is good. That's around about that 20% mark that I was talking about. I think one more win and I'll feel pretty confident with where we are now. Because remember, not only do we have to do it vaguely consistently, we also have to do it when the pressure's on as well. Okay, can we take two? No. Ah. Uh, yeah, I don't think this one's going to be the one, to be honest, but... Well, you never know. Stranger things have happened. Take two. <laughs> no. When I wish to give battle, my enemy, even though protected by high walls and deep moats, cannot help but engage me, for I attack a position he must succor. Okay. Okay. We were doing pretty good there for a little while. Abort! <laughs> well, we got up to the octopus tentacles, didn't we? This quote's a long one. 
When I wish to avoid battle, I may defend myself simply by drawing a line on the ground. The enemy will be unable to attack me because I divert him from going where he wishes. Now, Two Mew has some thoughts on this passage. Chu Ko Liang camped at Yang Ping and ordered Wei Yen and various generals to combine forces and go down to the east. Chu Ko Liang left only 10,000 men to defend the city while he waited for reports. Su Ma, I said, Chu Ko Liang is in the city, his troops are few. He is not strong, his generals and officers have lost heart. At this time, Chu Ko Liang's spirits were high as usual. He ordered his troops to lay down their banners and silence their drums and did not allow his men to go out. He opened the four gates and swept and sprinkled the streets. Su Ma, I suspected an ambush, and led his army in haste to the northern mountains. Chu Ko Liang remarked his chief of staff, Su Ma, I thought I had prepared an ambush and fled along the mountain ranges. Su Ma, I later learned of this, and was overcome with regrets. Now there's also a footnote to this note that says that this story provides the plot for a popular Chinese opera. Chu Ko Liang sat in a gate tower and played his lute while the porters swept and sprinkled the streets and Su Ma I's host hovered on the outskirts. Ah, Su Ma I is the name of someone. It's not Su Ma I, right. Uh, Suma I had been fooled before by Chuko Liang and would be fooled again. I wonder if that story's true. Opening your city gates and pretending like it's been abandoned, hoping that the enemy will fear an ambush, doesn't sound like a great way to defend a city. But then again, what do I know, right? I literally have zero experience of this sort of thing. Ah! Okay, one heal. Black. Good. Yeah, my problem was I was too greedy there. Ah, and that was poorly timed, for sure. teleported straight above me. If I am able to determine the enemy's dispositions whilst at the same time I conceal my own, then I can concentrate and he must divide. And if I concentrate while he divides, I can use my entire strength to attack a fraction of his. There, I will be numerically superior. Then, if I am able to use many to strike few at the selected point, those I deal with will be in dire straits. Tu Mu says, Sometimes I use light troops and vigorous horsemen to attack where he is unprepared. Sometimes strong crossbowmen and bow-stretching archers to snatch key positions to stir up his left, overrun his right, alarm him to the front, and strike suddenly to the rear. In broad daylight, I deceive him by the use of flags and banners, and at night confuse him by beating drums. Then in fear and trembling, he will divide his forces to take precautionary measures.
Ah! I saw it early enough to be able to want to go the other way, but still slightly missed the boat on it. Okay, good. One heal. Oof. We're just taking our time, taking our time. Take one heal. Ah, Tom. Come on. It's so hard to tell the difference between the pinwheel and the octopus. Got him. Well, my friends, that's three victories in 14 attempts. That's the 20% that we've been after, right? So with that, we're going to start doing the Pantheon again, okay? Now, before we were running Sharp Shadow, now I'm, I'm trying to remember who's in the Pantheon, right? We were running Sharp Shadow before. Is Unbreakable Heart actually uh, just a pretty reasonable thing to run instead? Because I'd rather have my charms set up to be pure vessel oriented which is another reason why it's great that we're back on um, quick slash rather than um, quick focus but here we go great start great start <laughs> yeah, we're a little bit out of practice on, on some of these, right? We've got to go straight into Lost Kin now, though. So Lost Kin is the second hardest enemy on this thing, yeah? Oh no! Yeah, we need to like totally re remind ourselves how to fight Lost Kin. Oh man. Yeah, he just jumps straight on you, of course, doesn't he? <laughs> yeah, wow. Fancy another quote? The enemy must not know where I intend to give battle, for if he does not know where I intend to give battle, he must prepare in a great many places. And when he prepares in a great many places, those I have to fight in any one place will be few. No. 
Don't at me with those bindings. We're not taking any bindings. Great. Ah! Man, it, he moves so weirdly, doesn't he? <laughs> Damn it. And I could see the eggs coming as well. Is it no eyes next? Okay, yes, it's no eyes next. So no eyes, thankfully. Is one that we can pretty much guarantee to finish on um, full health. The only other consideration I would give is maybe to get rid of the two extra masks and instead have a charm that gathers me more soul. Because I am definitely hurting for more soul. I think against Lost Kin, I need to not use magic. Right. You want to make sure that you do not get hit in this fight, because that is a real waste. Nope. Safety, safety. Nearly back to full health. Good. Right, then it's Traitor Lord next, right? So Traitor Lord should be okay. Particularly with Quick Slash. Great. And we get to go into White Guardian with... Yeah, so with No Eyes and then Traitor Lord, we don't actually have to worry about finishing Lost Kin with a lot of health. We just need to get past Lost Kin, to be fair. Right, White Defender. Oh man, he's fast, isn't he? Ha <laughs> ha! 
Okay, good, good, good. Yeah, maybe your abyssal shriek is is pretty good in that in that case. So, uh, false knight next. There he is. Ah. Oh no. Oh, damn it. Without Sharp Shadow, I am really struggling to get to the other side of him, actually. That's a bit of a problem. Going into the next fight on three health. Uh, yeah, okay. Yeah, Sharp Shadow was definitely helping me a lot in that one. Horizontal ones are the worst, aren't they? Oh no, I literally jumped into it as well. Yeah, we're going to have problems in this one for sure. Ugh. Oh no. Ah, shoot. Sharp Shadow was helping us get. Sharp Shadow was definitely helping us with False Knight quite a bit there. For if he prepares to fight, his rear will be weak, and if to his rear, his front will be fragile. If he prepares to the left, his right will be vulnerable, and if to the right, there will be few on his left. And when he prepares everywhere, he will be weak everywhere. The uh, literal translation for that, apparently, is if there is no place he does not make preparations, there is no place he is not vulnerable. But the double negative makes the meaning emphatically positive. <laughs> Chang Yu comments, He will be unable to fathom where my chariots will eventually go out, or where my cavalry will actually come from, or where my infantry will actually follow up, and therefore he will disperse and divide, and I will have to guard against me everywhere. Consequently, his force will be scattered and weakened, and his strength divided and dissipated. And at the place I engage him, I can use a large host against his isolated units. <coughs> False Knight. Okay. First fight done.
Got him. False knight, I think we just have to be a lot more careful with. Patience, patience. Oh, no. Ah, patience, patience, patience. RNG is really hurting us here, isn't it? Like, come on. Get down here. Like, he'll come down at some point. You know, in your own time, my friend. Anything we get now is just bonus, right? Because we don't really need the soul for Traitor Lord, because Traitor Lord's a question of hitting him as much as you can, as fast as you can, and you will win. Great. Whoa, I feel like after going through all these pantheons, like, I feel like we'd be ready for a Steel Soul mode, you know what I mean? Oh no, I did- oh, I've done that wrong, oh, I've done that all sorts of wrong. Okay, got him. Oh, it won't fill up whilst you're focusing. Right, but you can do one mask there, that's fine. Yeah, lack of sharp shadow is also hurting us here a little bit. Got us. 
Shoot, gotta be a little bit careful here. Got him, okay, good, good, good. Right, back up to false nine. I mean, if Sharp Shadow would be really that beneficial for us for False Knight, what's really the penalty in losing two masks? Right, when we come to Pure Vessel. It's an entire another hit that we can't take. But if it means that we get there a lot more reliably... Oh, yeah, he got us there. Good. We're still at full health. This is excellent. Oh, wow. Yeah, no, we're doing really well. Got us. Oh no. Okay. Got him. So this gets us into Markov in much, much better shape. Much, much better shape. Oh, got him into the thing. Oh, man, come on, Markov. Okay, got him. <laughs> he took so many abyssal shrieks to the face. But man, yeah, we got we got right into his base. We got all up in his base, right? Good. Take a triple if we can. Yep, we got a triple. If we, we got a triple. Oof. Oh, oh, oh. Is that the last one now, then? Okay. So now it's Soul Tyrant. Oh man, come on, no. Oh, 
Oh, what is this? Come on. got me there. Back up to full health. There we go. Oh, come on. Okay, here we go. Okay, okay. We got him. Can we heal up to full health? Right, full health. On to pure vessel. Right, here we go, here we go. <sighs> show reverence, O meager one, show fear. Thou approacheth a great and terrible God. Though its worldly body be bound and defiled, the glory of its pure form endures. Ruler of this pantheon, its endless power shall attune us to the one greater still, a god of gods. Meager one, dost thou imagine thyself the equal of this god? Dost thou imagine thyself made in its image? Thou assume a similar shape, and the deep echo within thee seems familiar. Ah, what thoughts are these? Thou so blasphemies in our mind, wretch. Be gone. We pray that the god of nothingness silence thee forever. O oh, bound one, thy silence nearly deafens us. Foolishly we feared ye, that only by thine providence shall we find the one we seek, the god sleeping within. Oh, they're all radiance worshippers. Oh, I hadn't realised that. Okay. Right, here we go. Right, we're doing it for real this time. Here we go. Oh. 
Okay. Shame. Yeah, okay, got us good there. Oh no, he got us for a double. Ah, damn it. Oh. the one that's the one that's why we do the practice lads that's why we do the practice pantheon four complete Soul and Shade complete the Pantheon of the Night, 1729. And that, my friends, is 112%. There is one thing for us to now do, and that's to go and get our various endings. Thank you, Sun Tzu. Your wisdom really carried us through. Wow. If you enjoyed this video, hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. My heart is going, wow. I can't believe we did it on like the second attempt through the Pantheon. Like that's amazing. We practiced it so hard so that when we got there, we would know exactly what to do. And we just, we just smashed it. We just smashed it. <sighs> hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. Next time out, we're going and getting some various endings. And there we go, we'll have 112% completion. Never done it before, it's been a wild ride. I'll see you next time. Have a great evening. <laughs>